Whoa! Chris Mellon has just confirmed the existence of the UFO crash retrieval program within the government. This is huge. Uh, this is from his own website where he has written an article confirming the Eric Davis uh, Admiral Tom Wilson note. This is amazing. Okay, get in here. This is Jack Connor with Cosmic Road. I talk about UFOs and the paranormal. Please hit like, please subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified of future videos. Share on social media, and as I'm going through the story, please comment below and let me know what you think. Oh, also, please consider becoming a channel member to support Cosmic Road and allow me to make the best videos I know how. Uh, see the first line in the description below, or you can simply leave a tip in the tip jar with the super thanks feature below. I would appreciate it. Okay, moving on with the story. I'm a little bit groggy from uh, Christmas excess, so forgive me. Uh, I hope y'all guys had a great Christmas or happy holidays, and uh, I just hope you're having a really good one. Uh, but uh, moving on with the story, again, this is from Chris Mellon's website, uh, Christopher, Christopher and I will post a link to this article. And, um, you know, he's, he's praising the UAP legislation, as he should, and I believe that it's very likely that he authored some of that language, just as he authored uh, some of the language for the original UAP task force. Um, so, um, you know, and, and he deserves a lot of praise for this. I think he was instrumental uh, in some of the, the behind-the-scenes stuff uh, for the um, you know, language that was just signed into law by President Biden and the NDAA, formalizing the uh, creation of Aero and uh, the UFO whistleblower protection. And it's just a whole bunch of good stuff that hopefully will, will yield really good fruit uh, in the years to come. But anyway, I'm not going to read his glowing praise for the UAP uh, legislation, but I will touch on what he said about Eric Davis, because this is huge. This is huge. Uh, okay, what do you, here we go. Uh, even before his, and I'm reading, even before this whistleblower legislation was signed into law, Credible individuals were providing Congress information alleging that the U.S. government has recovered extraterrestrial technology. This process began in 2019 when I brought astrophysicist Eric, Dr. Eric Davis to Capitol Hill to meet with staff from the Senate Intelligence and Armed Services Committees. Dr. Davis, author of the famous Wilson Davis Memo. So he is confirming the existence uh, and the legitimacy of the Wilson Davis memo, something that even Dr. Eric Davis won't do and can't do, um, but various other people have. And uh, now Chris Mellon is on board confirming the existence of the memo. And I'll, I'll finish this paragraph, and then we'll get into why that's so significant. Uh, let's see, Dr. Davis, author of the memo, provided specific information lending credence to sensational reports that an official U.S. government program is actively seeking to exploit recovered technology that was fashioned by some other species, or perhaps advanced AI machines. Much of the information Dr. Davis provided remains highly classified. But the good news is that these sensational claims, which have the potential to transform our understanding of the universe and man's place within it, are now being taken seriously and properly investigated. I brought others besides Dr. Davis and Lou Elizondo to the Hill in the Arrow office, and I am encouraging anyone else who may be able to help set the record straight to step forward as well. Uh, yeah, so... Yeah, huge news, huge news. Um, why is this so significant? Well, because in the Eric, yeah, well, why is it so significant that the Eric Davis, Tom Wilson uh, notes are real? Well, because in those notes, Admiral Tom Wilson, who is the director of the DIA, the uh, Defense intelligence agency, Admiral Wilson tried to get access to the uh, government's UFO uh, program. 
and he was denied. But he knew of the existence of the program, and he, uh, as the director of the DIA, one of the big intelligence agencies, uh, you know, thought that he had the right to know and the need to know, and uh, therefore he should be in on the program, be read into the program. And they shut him out. He insisted and insisted, and eventually they set him down for a meeting and they told him uh, some stuff. They said, uh, you know, all the stuff is blown out of proportion. There's no alien abductions or anything like that. But yeah, you know, we've got some ships, you know, we've been tinkering around, tinkering around with them for a while. And, you know, maybe we've got one to fly, you know, uh, but no big deal. You know, go about your business. Uh, you don't need to be read into the program. You don't have a need to know. Admiral Wilson uh, was not happy with that answer. And he kept on insisting until they threatened his career and his pension. And um, they had enough juice to do that, as you would expect. I mean, of course, the control group is going to have enough juice to do anything it wants to do, basically. I mean, it is the breakaway civilization. It is its own rogue, independent thing, uh, not operating on any laws that apply to anybody else, but able to control the laws that other people have to abide by and control the system itself to some extent. I mean, they even threatening the director of a major intelligence agency. So, uh, you know, uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, but they did deny the juicy stuff like alien abductions and, you know, working with beings and, you know, you know, they weren't about to cop to any of that. But they did admit to the existence of um, the crash retrieval program and the fact that they did have UFOs in their possession that they were trying to get to work. So, you know, even if we, you know, took what they said at face value, which I do not, uh, but just that alone is huge. So just the, the Wilson notes, the Eric uh, Davis Wilson notes on their own, uh, just even assuming they are fact, I mean, you know, what the control group or what the uh, uh, crash retrieval guys told Eric, uh, excuse me, Tom Wilson, um, just assuming that was fact, it's major. It's gangbusters. It is disclosure with a capital D. It is the biggest news ever. And Chris Mellon has just confirmed the existence of this crash retrieval program and, you know, alien presence. Now, he does go out of his way in the article to say, oh, well, you know, I'm not saying there's necessarily aliens, but, you know, these whistleblowers like Eric Davis and uh, Lou El Elizondo, you know, are highly suggestive, you know, that kind of that kind of stuff. Uh, but he is confirming the legitimacy of the Eric Davis Wilson notes, which by themselves confirm the existence of the UFO crash retrieval program within the United States government and possibly outside of the United States government. If we are to believe stories like Lance Corporal uh, Weigand, uh, who uh, was part of a, um, a securing the crash site of a UFO, I believe in Brazil in the 90s, if I'm remembering that right. If I'm not, please remind me. Uh, but uh, he, he was a Marine and he wasn't supposed to know about the UFOs. And uh, he was just sent to secure this crash site of some object. And when he got there, he was surprised to see a UFO. Well, he was arrested by the Air Force and taken back to the crash retrieval program's uh, base, where he saw that it was a multinational effort. There were even people from China there, which is interesting. So, um, yeah, so the, you know, the control group, whatever you want to call it, MJ-12, the Area 51 guys, wh whoever they are, may very well be working with other countries. And the UFO crash retrieval program is certainly retrieving crashes from other countries. We have numerous cases, very credible cases, not just Lance Corporal Weigand, uh, but the Virginia case uh, that James Fox just made an entire movie about, uh, moment of contact, which I highly recommend, and uh, so many other cases 
uh, highly credible cases were the uh, U.S. government, uh, you know, possibly working with somebody else, um, moved to, you know, moved in and collected these uh, crashed UFOs from other places and took the crashes back to the U.S. Uh, you know, who knows where, you know, Area 51, Wright Patterson, um, you know, some deep underground military base somewhere, who knows. The crash retrievals are highly interesting to me because we have other cases like the Terry Loveless case, uh, who is a, a veteran who has been, his story has been vetted by Lou Elizondo. Hello, hey. I've got a cat trying to help me out. Okay, I have locked him out. <laughs> but yeah, the Terry Loveless story is fascinating uh, because it's one of many cases, um, but it's a very credible case from a very credible guy uh, that shows the, um, uh, the, the U.S. military working hand-in-hand -hand with the beings. In his particular case, he saw over 50 U.S. military personnel aboard a giant UFO working with the beings. So, um, the crash retrieval program, is that a separate enterprise? Um, because, you know, why, why would they be retrieving crashes? Uh, presumably, I mean, the, the common wisdom behind crash retrievals uh, from ufologists was because they want to reverse engineer these things. So they want to study them. So they retrieve them and they study them and they reverse engineer them. But if they are actually working with the beings in, in highly credible accounts like the Terry Loveless case, uh, you know, clearly point to them working with the beings, is that the same group that's doing the crash retrievals? Um, or is that some other group, some independent program? Uh, because it would make sense for, you know, some other program that's not working with the beings to want to reverse engineer alien technology. Uh, but if they're already working with the beings and they're already aboard ships and presumably have their own ships, why would they need to reverse engineer, engineer this stuff? So, you know, there's a lot of missing pieces here, clearly. Could they be, uh, you know, re retrieving crashes just to hide the evidence? Uh, could that be a thing? Maybe they're working with the beings of one species and retrieving crashes from another species to reverse engineer their technology because the beings that we're working with don't have that technology. Um, I don't know, guys. It's all very weird and there's so many missing pieces. Uh, and that's, you know, one of many reasons why we need answers to all this stuff uh, to fill in the gaps. What does it all mean? How does it fit together? I don't know. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. But at least now we have confirmation from no less than Christopher Mellon that the crash retrieval program is real. This is huge. This is a major story. Let me know what you think about it below. And if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. Please smash the subscribe button and hit the bell so you don't miss a single video. Please join me on social media. There's Facebook and Twitter links below. And please, if you enjoy these videos, please consider supporting the channel by becoming a channel member. See the first line in the description below. And there's two tiers of membership to receive exclusive access in videos. Until next time, this is Jack with Cosmic Road.